You see how it works, folks? She caved in because she was afraid she wouldn't be re-elected mayor in the next election. She lost my respect. She probably lost a lot of people's respect. But she doesn't care. Her political career is safe. What was really at the heart of the Washington Times article, which was otherwise a potpourri of outrageous and up unsubstantiated charges against the nation of Islam was a demand that Congress defeat the major appropriations bill for the Department of Housing and Urban Development over the question of whether HUD rules should permit a HUD contractor to hire the dope busters to provide security for a federally subsidized housing project in Los Angeles. The ADL was particularly upset about the national attention the successful Dope Busters drug eradication program was getting. The Dope Busters were founded in Washington, D.C. in 1988. Since then, unarmed Dope Buster patrols have been able to eradicate drug trafficking at the street level in nine Washington ghetto neighborhoods and private housing projects, completely and totally disrupting the plans of the Illuminati to control those people. They've done this with no deaths and very, very little violence. Exemplary of the success of the program is the Mayfair Mansions housing complex in northeast Washington. Mayfair Mansions whipped from an ugly, unsafe, open-air drug market in 1988 to being a handsomely restored, safe, vibrant community as a result of dope buster patrols. When HUD Secretary Jack Kemp visited Mayfair Mansions earlier this year, he admitted that the nation of Islam's dope busters deserved the credit and indicated that he was open to granting the patrol's federal government contracts. Actually, it wasn't this year. Ladies and gentlemen, it was in 1992. Tenants in public and private housing projects from New York to Baltimore to Los Angeles are demanding dope buster patrols. In most cases, the idea has the support of local police and government agencies who have failed to find any other effective way to curtail the intensifying pattern of drug trafficking and violence. In almost every case, the ADL has attempted to block the tenant's choice of security force. The tenant leaders who refuse to back down have been subjected to threats, harassments, break-ins, and other forms of intimidation. This time, however, the ADL may have committed a fatal error in launching such an open and vicious attack on the nation of Islam. Dr. Abdul Alim Mohammed is not only a leader of the nation of Islam, he's one of the most respected community leaders in the Washington area, and his pioneering work against AIDS is gaining him international recognition. The black and Hispanic communities in the United States are disproportionately infected by the deadly virus, but have had almost no access to the accepted treatment which consists of the prohibitively expensive and highly toxic AZT, DDI, or DDC, and as we've revealed on this program, those drugs may really be the cause of death of AIDS patients. Dr. Mohammed and New York City physician Dr. Barbara Justice have reported dramatic success in treating more than 600 patients who are HIV positive with immunovirin, the drug they brought back from Kenya. The pair is also credited with bringing vital information concerning this new treatment modality to both the general public and the medical profession. Taking the point in a courageous effort to avert what would otherwise be the worst holocaust to hit the human race. Similarly, the ADL's charges against the dope busters carry little credibility and leave the ADL completely exposed as nothing more than a protection racket for the drug cartel. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the truth. The dope busters enjoy the intense support of the communities they serve and have an unprecedented record of success. Wherever they go, the dope busters convey an unmistakable message of hope and inspiration to the community that the war on drugs can be won. Interviews with the residents of the communities served by the Dope Busters make clear that they believe that it is that message and nothing else that has made the Nation of Islam and the Dope Busters a target of ADL attack. 
in a community where the twin plagues of drug addiction and AIDS are the most visible vestiges of slavery. The ADL has shown that despite the passage of time, its true loyalties lie with the slave masters. Now, in 1985, the ADL proudly gave its Torch of Liberty Award to Las Vegas businessman Morris Barney Dalitz. You don't know who that is, do you? The award ceremony, a strictly black tie affair, was given front page attention in the league's monthly bulletin, which praised Dalitz as a great philanthropist who had donated generously to the ADL over the years. Dalitz's generosity was motivated by a lot more than an impulse to help out a favorite charity. As one of the most important figures in organized crime over a period of 60 years and as a lifetime right-hand man to organized crime's 20th century chairman of the board, Meyer Lansky, Mo Dalitz was well aware of the fact that the Anti-Defamation League was from its founding a powerful secret arm of the Illuminati the go-between between the National Crime Syndicate and the respectable arms of the secret organization that is out to control the world. Without the ADL's undaunted public relations work on behalf of organized crime, the United States would have never been flooded with illegal drugs, and gangsters like Dalitz and Langsky would have long ago been carted off to the penitentiary. Dalitz was one of the kingpins of the Prohibition-era bootlegging business, and he, along with three other gangsters, more